Hello, everyone, and welcome to this TELET webinar, What You Need to Know About Winning the IoT Cybersecurity War. I'm Joe Braga, Head of Regional Marketing here at TELET, and I'll be moderating today's event. Let's get to know the speakers today. To explain this topic, I'm pleased to be joined by four speakers. First, we have Dr. Mihai Boyke, VP of IoT Services, R&D, and IoT and Security Technologies at TELET. Second, we have Martino Turcato, Head of Software at TELET. Uh, then we have Natalie Chuva, co-founder and CEO at Sternum, and uh, followed by Tal Granat, Head of On-Device Solutions at Sternum. Just before I hand it over to Mihai to start the presentation, a few quick reminders for you. I would like to encourage our audience to interact by posting questions. We will have time to answer some of these at the end of the presentation. Simply submit the question by posting in the, in, in the box to the right of the slides. Also be sure to check the resources section in the upper right hand corner uh, for additional information. Finally, we will send out the presentation slides and reply and, and replay link to all attendees at the conclusion of the webinar. And with Ash, Mihai, I hand it over to you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. I'm very pleased to see everyone in the webinar. Uh, we have a very interesting session today, and I'm very, very, very happy to share it with everyone. Uh, as Joe mentioned, I lead the R&D for IoT platform as well as uh, uh, security technologies at Telet for the whole company. And I'm very glad to give you some insights of some new um, features and a new research that we are doing uh, regarding security. Uh, as you know, uh, we are a manufacturer of cellular modules, as well as, well as we are uh, one of the uh, pioneers in the IoT space in terms of services. Um, during this uh, endeavor, we interact with a lot of customers and we we'll hear a lot of feedback related to features, but in speci especially recently with, uh, uh, related to security. Um, as you expect, we research a lot and we try to understand the market and try to understand how customers see the security. Um, in this slide, you can see that the most of the managers that we actually looked um, from the researches uh, that were available, they are concerned with uh, security. And especially with the explosion of the IoT devices with security for the IoT devices. Um, you can take a look, even Microsoft and Beecham Research highlighted security as very important. And if you take a look to the companies that are concerned with the security, 97% of them are concerned. This is a very, very high number uh, and uh, highlights how important and how widespread security for IoT is actually happening. Let's move to the next slide. The second slide shows uh, a McKinsey report where cybersecurity has moved to the top of the priorities for enterprises before anything else. And as you can imagine, this cannot be ignored. A um, couple of uh, years back, uh, based on this analysis that came to us, we start looking for solutions on, on the market that can be applied to our uh, product. And we are very happy to uh, uh, be engaged and be partner with a, a very cool and um, a, a very focused company, Sternum. And uh, this webinar is all about how we try to em embrace new challenges of security and bring them into our space, into the modules, into the uh, uh, services for uh, IoT. With that, uh, I would like to introduce my colleague from Talet, uh, Martino Turcato. Uh, as Joe mentioned, he is the head of the software uh, product management at Talet. 
and he's going to discuss with uh, with you uh, some of the uh, security requirements that we have uh, set forward for uh, for uh, our customers and try to understand how we fulfill them. So Martino, uh, take it over, please. Thanks, Mikhail. Uh, so before giving the floor to our colleagues at Sternum, I, I'd like to set the stage for some uh, key concepts and give you a perspective, as Mikhail was saying, on the technology from a product management standpoint. So I'm not going to dive into the technical aspects Natalie will provide you with a detailed and comprehensive overview. I'd rather focus on some of the major pain points and the requirements that led us to select Sternum as a key partner in our security strategy. So uh, first of all, security is inherently complex. Uh, for many companies, it is very difficult to develop and announce the broad expertise that is required Although, as we will see later in the presentation, most of the attacks are based on common patterns that are well known and understood by the experts. And the weaknesses uh, and the potential avenues for an attack can be anywhere, can be in the code that your team has developed. Sometimes they can depend on, the, on third party software components that you integrate but you don't fully own and maintain, and you assume are mature, tested, uh, secured. And of course, if you can get rid of most of uh, zero-day vulnerabilities, you are already in a very good um, position and in a much better uh, security posture. Second, you cannot uh, simply rely on a security strategy that is based uh, on continuous patching and uh, updates, uh, you have to consider that uh, what is applicable and sustainable in some environments, uh, think for example about the many updates uh, being pushed uh, on a daily basis on your desktop systems or phones, well, uh, that might simply not be suitable for devices that are constrained in resources, for example, uh, that are running on batteries and have to last for more than 10 years, or uh, devices that have a costly and limited connection. Another key feature is uh, real-time detection and prevention. So IoT systems are usually geographically spread. Uh, they are not always connected. They might not be able to report a change in state uh, and receive instructions in a timely fashion about what to do. And so, uh, in case of an attack, they, they must be able to take some, uh, some autonomous actions and react according to a policy that, that must be uh, configurable uh, depending on the, on the use case uh, and the specific application requirements. And to conclude, operational awareness uh, is and the visibility of your deployment uh, um, is another important and crucial aspect. So even before an attack uh, causes uh, uh, disruption in your service, uh, you need to know whether you are being uh, uh, targeted and your solution should be smart enough uh, to, to detect uh, unexpected uh, behaviors or patterns that can be reported and analyzed uh, proactively uh, before the situation becomes unmanageable. And all this information can be integrated with the analytics and the SIM tools if they are available in your enterprise IT systems. So uh, looking at these challenges, uh, we believe uh, that Sternum has been capable to, to deliver all the right ingredients uh, to, address, uh, to address these issues. And so I'll let Natalie to tell you more about uh, the technology and the unique selling points uh, of the solution. So, Natalie, over to you. Thank you very much, Martino. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you also, uh, Micha and Talit, for uh, hosting us and uh, for being such a great partner. So, um, as, as mentioned before, uh, we are going to touch today a few aspects of uh, IoT security. 
We're going to start with uh, a short introduction on the key aspects that uh, drive the, uh, the security in IoT uh, solutions today. And then we will discuss a little bit uh, existing solutions and mainly vulnerability management um, and why it may not be a, a very sustainable way to handle uh, the, the polification society devices. And we will introduce the Stenum approach, uh, Stenum's EAV and ADS product for monitoring real-time prevention and uh, asset management of IoT devices. And we will move forward to a very cool demonstration of the Telit Stenum offering that uh, provides built-in security for uh, Telit uh, and Stenum customers. So very excited to be here today and uh, let's, let's dive in. So a little bit about uh, Sternum, uh, as you uh, probably already guessed by now, Sternum provides embedded solutions that prevent cyber attacks on the device itself, while also using the on-device presence to extract unique data points from how the device's software and firmware behaves in real time to provide data analytics based on the behavior and also real-time alerts uh, on the prevented attack attempts or anomalous behavior. We work on uh, mission critical devices and the sectors that we already operated in includes medical devices, railway sensors, power grids, and of course, uh, um, industrial and communication models as, as the partnership that we have with Elite. So really the kind of solutions needed to be able to secure those devices from within really includes high standards of uh, quality and uh, safety to be able to integrate with those devices. As mentioned before, they have a lot of resource constraints, a lot of supply chain uh, dependencies, and operate sometimes on real-time operating systems with very critical operations. And this is the uh, power of our solution suitable to operate within those extreme environments. So the IoT in 2021, uh, first, all connected devices means more security and visibility demands. And uh, it's already been discussed before, uh, but we're seeing also that even today, there are more and more attacks, uh, actually 300% more attacks on IoT in 2020. And that number is all, already on the rise uh, during COVID-19. Uh, we have, thousands of attacks reported per month, and these are just reported attacks. IoT became the gateway of choice for hackers penetrating different enterprises and organizations, since IoT today uh, is the weakest link in the security posture of different organizations. That means that more and more customers willing to pay more to buy protected devices and not be vulnerable to this uh, weakest link in the chain. We are also seeing that manufacturers of IoT devices are in the spotlight of regulators. What it means is that different regulations, the FDA, NIST, ENISA, and Europe, uh, all of them require certain standards of security uh, from the device makers as they are being the only one capable of baking in security into their devices. This is a responsibility for device makers, but also an opportunity being able to provide data from within the devices to the security operators, SOC or SIMS of your customers uh, can also be an advantage and a differentiator uh, from other competitors. We also see a lot of solutions in the IoT security field today focusing on network security. Securing enterprises networks like hospitals and other enterprises but cannot really secure distributed environments and cannot secure the IoT device itself. And that is uh, still missing in the field of IoT. And lastly, we're seeing a lot of device level data and insights that are just not being brought to uh, the products teams and R&D teams since nobody can collect uh, this kind of data from within the devices. So to conclude the, the uh, previous uh, points, 
Uh, IoT worldwide is growing exponentially. Security needs is growing, but the security solutions to secure those devices are still 20 years behind, and there needs to be a new approach to be able to secure those unique devices. We can ask ourselves why is it so difficult to secure those devices, and I want to give a few points. Uh, first, the diversity. In the traditional security space, the IT security space, we have mainly two operating systems, Windows and Linux, and we need to secure servers, networks, and endpoints. When we move forward to IoT devices, we have many different kinds of operating systems, embedded Linux, real-time operating systems, like MicroYom, Tradex, FreeAutos, even bare metal. We have different communication protocols and stacks, different hardwares. We have many devices already out there for years, and now we need to take care of their security post-production. That's very difficult. Second point is low confidence in third-party dependencies. We have a lot of third-party code in those devices, handling communication, encryption, uh, Bluetooth communication, for example, and even cellular communication. And we don't necessarily have tools and ability to make sure that those components doesn't have vulnerabilities and do not endanger our devices security and also performance. Lastly, those devices are very limited in resources, which means that many existing security solutions cannot work on those environments. Which brings us to the security today, security state today. First, we see that uh, there is no holistic real-time security for IoT devices, and many device makers rely on vulnerability management, patching of discovered uh, vulnerabilities, mainly post-production, after device, the devices are already deployed, and only for known vulnerabilities that are being published. There is no real sustainable on-device security that can operate within this highly restricted environments and prevent attacks before they happen and even uh, from zero-day vulnerabilities. The other uh, gap today in the market is that once we deploy those devices, the amount of uh, visibility that we get is very limited. Usually, there are missing in-field feedbacks from how the user behaves with the device, data that can help us solve problems, security problems, quality issues, performance faster. We are missing visibility into our third-party components, our operating systems, our distributed environments. And this kind of comprehensive data and feedback from the in-field devices can be a game changer, not just for uh, enabling security, but also to support in future developments and bringing better products into the market. So Joe, I think this is uh, the time yeah. for the pool. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, very insightful information here. Uh, I want to take a, a few seconds here with our audience uh, and drop this uh, a, uh, a poll for your, um, your review and answer. Which vulnerability management or discovery tools are you currently using? Uh, please take uh, a few seconds to, uh, to help us glean some insight from, um, from your uh, uh, perspectives. I'll give uh, give you guys a few seconds, and I'll turn it over back to you, Natalie. Thank you, Joe. Very good. We can proceed, Natalie. Okay. So let's dive in to the vulnerability management race and processes and uh, hopefully we can conclude on why it's not very sustainable in the IoT environment. So when I say vulnerability management, just to put all of us on the same page, I'm uh, referring to tools that help us identify vulnerabilities like static analysis tools, firmware analysis tools, even penetration testing processes, and then I'm also referring to tools that help us scan the network for uh, new CVEs, security issues that are being disclosed, and that help us initiate uh, a patch and update our devices. 
This entire cycle of identifying vulnerabilities and making sure that our devices are not vulnerable to them is what we call the vulnerability management process. And this approach is unsustainable, as I will uh, show in the next slides. But the main thing to consider here is that as we have more code, we have exponentially more vulnerabilities. Actually, there are uh, assumed to be 70 vulnerabilities per 10,000 lines of code. As we grow exponentially in the IoT devices, as your code in your devices is growing, we are going to have more and more vulnerabilities, more and more third parties, more and more code that is out there, and this is only expected to grow. This will result in absurdly high cost for companies to try to discover these vulnerabilities, mitigate them, patch them, and then update existing devices, which is already a very expensive procedure. This will mean that as we move forward uh, with this IoT revolution, we are going to spend even more effort, R&D time, and money on the vulnerability management process. And the reason why is this. Even today, with the existing amount of, uh, of devices and code, uh, we are spending around more than $100 billion per year on identifying and fixing product defects. We have 70% of developers' time spent on debugging and fixing issues. And if you look at the bottom of the slide, you see that on average, companies is spending the time of 10 full-time employees managing the vulnerability response process each week. And that is only expected to grow. And if we take a look at uh, um, our spend on vulnerability detection and labor cost in millions expected to be uh, in four years from now, we can see that we already spend big time just on closing the existing vulnerabilities that we detect. But even when we go through this process and go through this patching and penetration testing and static analysis and even invest this time solving the issues, we still have 2,000 new CVEs each month, just reported ones. We still have third-party code, like the Ripple 20 vulnerabilities, Amnesia, Urgent 11, just from the last year. These are codes that are being embedded into millions of devices, probably being scanned by a lot of those automatic tools to discover vulnerabilities, and those tools fail to find the vulnerabilities in those codes which means that um, after all, uh, and we have this number of 15 bucks per 10 lines of code that still find a way to the customer, we believe that the existing of a vulnerability is actually inevitable. And we see uh, that even 70% of patch Tuesdays initiated by Microsoft are due to memory-based vulnerabilities, a very common class of uh, vulnerabilities that are still cannot be fully detected by those automatic tools. So the assumption should be that there is no such thing as a device without a vulnerability. It's impossible to go out there with, with a device that contains so many functionalities and code and do not have uh, any vulnerability at all. So we spend all this money and all these efforts just to close the gaps that are known to us but this process also leaves us uncovered from unknown vulnerabilities, zero-day vulnerabilities, and potential attack. And more than that, those tools will not alert us if something will happen in real time. And now I want to uh, present the external approach for this issue. And the approach is basically to prevent the exploitation itself, not the vulnerabilities in real time and to alert you immediately if something is going wrong with your devices or if there is a potential cyber attack. To understand how we protect devices, we should probably take a look at uh, the attack flow or attack process. So basically every attack is uh, um, combined from four essential steps. The first step, which is the most famous one, is the vulnerability. This is where the attacker actually needs to find 
some flaw, some bug, even a meaningless bug in the system to be able to leverage it to the next step, which is the exploitation. The exploitation is where the attacker needs to manipulate the device, to manipulate the memory, to manipulate the execution flow, and to take advantage of the found vulnerability to actually make the device start running its own malicious code, which is the shell code and the malware. This is where it can actually control what the device will do, uh, like shutting down, uh, transmitting information to a malicious uh, uh, server, or even encrypt the device. Those four steps are essential uh, to initiate a successful cyber attack. But what's nice to understand here is that if we prevent the exploitation of a vulnerability, then it's not a vulnerability. What I mean by that is that if you have a buffer overflow, for example, but you, are, you have something on your device that prevents the exploitation of this buffer overflow, that is not allowing the corruption of the memory, then this vulnerability is actually meaningless. It's like having a vulnerability in a piece of code that is never being executed. If that is the case, then the vulnerability is not exploitable, and it means that you are protected even if there is a bug in the code. Understanding that uh, and adding onto it uh, these special characteristics will uh, uh, complete the picture of why Sternum is focused at preventing the exploitation. So what we understand today is that even though we can have many different kinds of vulnerabilities, the process of exploiting these vulnerabilities has some unique characteristics that are shared among the different vulnerability exploitations. We call these shared characteristics the unique fingerprint of exploitation. And this unique fingerprint of exploitation is consists of steps that the attacker must do during exploitation to exploit the devices. Sternum technology is focused at basically embedding a security on the device itself that will identify the exploitation fingerprint footsteps during the operation of the device. And when it detects a potential fingerprint in the memory in the execution of the device, it will prevent it from happening in real time. An example of how that could be used. So let's take a use case of the RITL20 vulnerabilities. Those were third party vulnerabilities in the TCP IP stack that uh, basically affected dozens of vendors and millions of devices. And you can see here a list of the vendors that needed to first spend time understanding if they are vulnerable. Then they needed to spend time uh, mitigating the issue and initiating a fix. And then they needed to spend uh, a lot of money on updating the existing devices just to patch the discovered vulnerabilities. Um, cost of patching could reach a few million dollars in, in those companies. And not to mention that this third party library probably been scanned by static analysis tools and other tools many times before, but until the uh, researchers did not uh, discovered the vulnerabilities, nobody knew about them, and they may be exploited and we uh, and cause damage. With the Stenum solution embedded on a device that contains the Ripple 20 vulnerabilities, what we were able to show is that we can block the exploitation of all of these critical vulnerabilities in real time, which means that if you are a vendor that got affected by Ripple 20 vulnerabilities and had in advance Stenum EIV solution embedded in your device, you could actually uh, not be listed here as a vulnerable vendor. You could even initiate the patch only at your own pace when you maybe already plan to release a new version and so on and so forth. But the main point is that EIV acted as active mitigation to these vulnerabilities 
because he is capable of preventing the, the exploitation of those vulnerabilities that remains the same among different kinds of them. And of course, since Ripple 20, there are even new vulnerabilities discovered in third party code, uh, which means that there is a true need to have some future proof protection against the next Ripple 20 vulnerabilities, uh, which is what Sternum EAV is, is providing. So let's take a step uh, into uh, Sternum's EAV and ADS. EAV uh, embedded integrity verification is our product embedded into different kinds of IoT devices to offer this prevention of exploitation in real time. ADS, our analysis and detection system, is our cloud platform offering uh, asset management data analytics and alerting capabilities uh, based on the data collected from the devices themselves. They operate in a synergy with one another. First, EAV. I'm not sure if you see a video right now, but you should. Um, yeah, there, there it is. So EAV first embedded automatically directly into the code of the device, including third party code, working on the binary level with no configuration needed, no added lines of code, uh, just integrate the solution directly into your R&D environment, and it will embed both the security and the data collection and device level visibility that are then being transmitted in real time to ADS to offer analytics and software profiling either during development for early detection of security issues, quality issues, performance issues, and more. And of course, in a post-market environment, providing you with real-time feedbacks, alerting, and flexible data analytics inter interface uh, based on the data that EIV sends over to ADS. The self-protection is embedded throughout the device without the need to patch the vulnerabilities, which is the real power of active mitigation. It's already been approved by the FDA. One of our partners, Metronic, uh, is working with us, embedded our solution on uh, patient monitors and medical devices. Uh, and this is a true testimony for us for the quality and standards of code uh, that our solution needed to, to provide. So if you are a device manufacturer working in a regulated environment, uh, this is uh, the kind of solution that uh, uh, can meet the highest standards in terms of uh, regulation and safety. So EIV basically provides immunity against this vulnerability pandemic that we are seeing today by targeting the exploitation fingerprint in real time. And let me go over some of the uh, specific features that it provides. First, it provides runtime protection applied directly into your code, including third parties. And then comes the first layer of defense. The first layer in, is consisting of the memory integrity uh, component of EAV. The memory integrity component is about stopping any memory corruption, any memory exploitation in real time, either the heap memory, data segments, stake memory, and all of the other dynamic parts of the memory of the device. And that means that we completely eliminate the most common class of vulnerabilities in the IoT industry, which are buffer overflows, use after freeze, improper input validation, and so on and so forth. By bringing this component into your environment, hooked directly into your memory manager, you can find uh, a sustainable protection against the most common uh, class of vulnerability. Then comes the second layer of EAV, which keeps the execution flow integrity uh, of your device. This is a very important component because one of the things that every cyber attack needs to do is to deviate from the execution flow intended by your developers, by the manufacturer itself, and direct the execution flow to a malicious code, malware. 
This component of EAV is all about keeping the integrity of your device at all times, making sure that only legitimate code is being executed and alerting you if there is an attempt to execute and not, not legitimate code, not signed code, and not in the right order. This feature can actually eliminate the most advanced attacks both from zero day and one day. The last layer of EAV is protection against application uh, kind of vulnerabilities and logical vulnerabilities. This means alerting of login attempts, brute force attacks, DDoS attacks that are very common in the IoT space, and different anomalous behavior that will pop up in our ADS platform to ensure end-to-end -end protection um, and detection of different potential breaches that are not necessarily software-based. This means that uh, the kind of protection provided goes from the deepest levels of the memory and execution flow up to the highest levels of how the application behaves in real time and other kinds of resource consumption and hard-coded passwords that may endanger your devices. To conclude, first, by using EAV and ADS uh, in your products, you bring immediate visibility and alerts for your infield devices since it can be deployed post-market, even of a five years old device, and it can also be deployed from the first line of code providing you early detection and software analytic uh, capabilities. We have best-in-class overhead. This has been tested many times uh, through different customers and partners. And this means that even if you have the most resource-constrained device, we can still protect you. We have very high successes of preventing entire classes of vulnerabilities. In this case, um, the percentage here referring memory-based vulnerabilities. Another uh, um, very important thing to mention is that we integrate with all kinds of platforms. And I'm talking about different operating systems, including all kinds of real-time operating systems. We are protocol agnostic, so whether you use BLE, Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi, MQTT, and even proprietary protocols, our solution uh, basically integrates with that automatically, and you don't need to change anything in your existing stacks. We mitigate supply chain risk by basically embedding our solution on third parties as well, giving you immunity against the next ripple, and saving the time and money spent on fixing those issues and initiating patches just due to vulnerabilities. And of course, it's been proven in field on the most secure mission critical environment. If uh, you remember, I mentioned before different classes of vulnerabilities. What you can see here is the kind of coverage provided with sterile solutions. And you can see that the most common threats, classes of common threats, are being prevented, prevented automatically with our solution to provide basically cybersecurity peace of mind for your products and, and, and future developments. And this is a nice uh, sharing of testimonies from uh, our, our precious partners. So what you see here is one of our partners from Tronic uh, mentioning uh, how EAV proves to prevent the exploitation of new CVE and is able to detect and prevent huge range of exploits. And what's nice to see here is how amazingly light footprint is it, is it for what you get, how you can just can get a better safety net for your devices, and how rare this kind of solution is for our space, which is the space of IoT embedded devices mission critical devices that need to operate in a very difficult environment, distributed environment, but still perform uh, all the time with high percentage of accuracy and still want to have the kind of security that brings peace of mind to those environments. So we are very proud of, of being able to, uh, to prove the kind of value 
to our customers because really the main passion for us is to make sure that we move forward to this connected future and secure environment safe from threat actors and malicious attempts. <clears throat> Thank you, Natalie. So, for, yeah. yeah, so we, I don't know why I jumped a few slides, but <laughs> yeah, I think this is the next slide. Yeah. Go ahead. Jeff. No, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Um, I uh, I want to call your attention, uh, the attention of the audience to this specific poll here. Um, for us on the uh, solution supply side, as you as you heard, uh, you know, such complexity in the on the uh, on the solution supply to you know, to make it effective for us, you know, gleaning some insights from you is very important. So take a few seconds to um, you know to respond to this. Uh, Second poll here that uh, if uh, runtime security were to be available with zero integration or configuration efforts, uh, would you consider purchasing it? Um, take take a few seconds to ponder and, and answer for us, if you would. Thank you. Very well. And now I'd like to uh, um, turn this over uh, to Martino. Uh, to review the uh, the joint solution with Sternum and, uh, and Talit. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Uh, briefly on the Talit Sternum offering. And so Sternum solution is very flexible, as you've seen, and uh, and blends very well with Talit One Edge offering. So for those of you that are not familiar with it, OneEdge is a TELIT uh, award-winning uh, uh, module-integrated software suite, uh, which comes with tools and services that aim at uh, simplifying the design, uh, the deployment, uh, and the management of an IoT solution. And the whole idea is to improve uh, both your time to market and the total cost of ownership. So the integration with Sternum is realized both on the device side, uh, protecting the firmware, and also the customer applications running on Appson. Appson is the embedded development framework uh, that is available in most of Telit modules. And on the server side, uh, the Sternum solution is complementing the device management tools of uh, OneEdge. Of course, uh, this can be also used in conjunction uh, with the Sternum ADS platform that you have seen uh, earlier in this presentation, which is providing uh, the advanced features and the analyst analytics uh, features that uh, we have mentioned. So if you are interested in the, in the offering, you can reach out to our team. We can provide more details, uh, but I'll let Natalie elaborate on some architectural aspects and uh, introduce the demo. Thank you, Martino. So a little bit about the architecture. So EIV is actually already implemented into the firmware and memory of uh, the Telit module, which provides real-time real protection on both of the elements, basically keeping the integrity of any incoming and, and outputs uh, of your device running through the cellular connectivity. Um, important to mention that basically cellular modules and Bluetooth modules and Wi-Fi modules and basically everything connected to the outside world is the most critical piece uh, to make sure that it's secure in real time because most attacks today are remote attacks coming through the connectivity. And the fact that PIV is already integrated into those components, making sure uh, of the integrity of the process is significant. Now, if we illustrate an example attack attempt, then let's assume there is an attack, attacker trying to attack either the firmware or memory of the device, or even uh, some application, your application, it needs to go through the cellular module. When it does that, basically there is a real-time attack alert being transmitted either directly to the One Edge portal, if you're already a customer and wants to see that on Telit's portal, or to Stenum ADS. Uh, which includes additional uh, features and data analytics. From that point on, you can either respond, re remediate the vulnerability, or respond to the attack attempt, or uh, just uh, 
understand that, uh, that uh, uh, basically your device is still safe. Uh, you can also transmit uh, this a notification directly to your customers if you're working with enterprises and providing them with this first line of defense uh, mentioned by Martino at the beginning. This is a huge need for enterprises today, having their IoT devices not just protected, but also <coughs> capable of alerting them if something had happened. And using this architecture, you are capable of uh, um, directly integrating the alerts coming from your devices to the old customers, uh, SOC or SIM or security dashboard, and providing them with this monitoring capabilities and first line of defense uh, for his devices. And now I think I'll, I'll move the, uh, the uh, control to Tal, um, our own device solutions uh, team leader, that will present shortly the demo and we'll just, uh, move directly to the fun stuff of seeing this in action. Tal? Yes, thank you, Natalie. Tal, we can't hear you. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So let me explain what we're going to see in the demo. Uh, the setup includes the Telit One Edge module, which communicates with Telit's IoT portal. Now, using the portal, we can send Base64 encoded strings to the module, and the application code in the module decodes the string and prints it on the LCD screen. Now, we use the Telit's portal to demonstrate an attack on the device, but actual attackers might exploit the device via cellular network. AD command, etc. cetera. Uh, we will show in the demo what happens to the device with and without sternum ZAV integration into the firmware, while in both cases, the vulnerability is not patched.
Thank you, Dal. Thank you. Um, before we uh, turn over to the um, to the uh, questions, I, uh, I'm going to drop one uh, one last poll question for for our audience. Uh, uh, thank you. I'd like to thank all our speakers and. Um, and please be reminded that we can still um, take your questions. We have time for some. Uh, if you please, um, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, drop them in the um, in the in the question box, and we will uh, <clears throat> try to get to them. Very well, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to uh, start to running some of these questions through our speakers here today. Um, the first one, um, Telet offers uh, customer modules that have one edge security features. Uh, how is this new technology integrating in the, the overall offering? Uh, can you elaborate? Um, thank you, uh, Joe. I, I will take that. Um, at Talit, we are looking to provide uh, um, as many security features to our modules. A few years back, we started looking at what the market is going to look like. Uh, with the OneEdge program, we introduced uh, special uh, AT commands. We introduced uh, a, a capability for zero touch onboarding, which provides a lot of security behind the scene. Um, Sternum is just an, an additional tool, uh, an additional technology that will allow us to give our customers a head start in the security realm. I don't think we have finalized our bags of tricks. Uh, we're going to try to add more and more capabilities and offer them as a direct uh, into our uh, modules or through our services into the, our portal or through uh, partners portals um, in case of uh, modules. Thank you. Back to you, Joe. Thank you, Mihai. Yeah, very, very good. Um, I have a very good question here. Uh, why is your solution not an endless race like vulnerability patching? Can there be new exploitations you can't handle? Yeah, it's a great question. So actually, um, vulnerabilities are divided by classes, right? So you can have 1,000 different kinds of buffer overflows, but they are still all, all have the same characteristics of being a buffer overflow. And the exploitation of a bubble overflow can't really change that much. It has to involve a corruption of the memory. So by targeting, instead of identifying all the 1,000 different ways of encoding a buffer overflow vulnerability, you can focus on preventing the memory corruption itself. And that can't really change. So what we have seen in the past few years is that it's rarely happens that there is a new type of exploitation. Usually there are uh, certain classes of vulnerabilities and the exploitation of those have this unique fingerprint. So by mapping the existing classes of vulnerabilities with the exploitation fingerprint of each enabled us to provide long-term sustainable way to prevent them. Um, in the end, it's uh, never happened in the past few years that the common threats for devices had changed. So the classes are very well known. We just need to find a way, uh, a sustainable way to map how the exploitation looks like for each of those uh, types of vulnerabilities. Very good, very good. Thank, thank you, Natalie. Um, I think we have time for a couple more questions. I'd like to pose this one. Um, <clears throat> how do you keep up with all of the known existing and new attacks? Is there a national database? And how do you solve uh, zero day? And, uh, and then there's a follow on on that. Finally, how do you ensure the IoT device software gets updated uh, to protect these uh, against these threats? 
Okay, so this is this is a layered question, and it actually relates to the previous one. So the way we keep up with all the known existing and new attacks is by really mapping uh, the way exploitation and malware act in real time um, and and prevent those. So even if there is a new attack that is based on uh, race condition or use after free or buffer overflow, we are still supporting this kind of attack. And the Ripple 20 is a good example. We did not develop our solution to protect against Ripple 20 vulnerabilities. We did not know about them. But when tested our solution against the Ripple 20 vulnerability exploitation, we were able to deterministically and 100% prevent them. This is expected to happen with the next Ripple 20 vulnerabilities, and this is the way we handle with new attacks as well as mitigating existing issues. Um, in terms of solving zero-day vulnerabilities, it's actually the same answer. When there is a zero-day vulnerability, let's take stack buffer overflow, for example, in Linux environment, and you compile your code with a stack canary, which is a way to prevent specifically stack buffer overflow vulnerabilities, then this zero-day vulnerability is actually not a vulnerability because the stack canary implemented in your code makes it impossible to exploit the stack overflow vulnerability. And actually you are protected from this zero day, which is not a zero day because it's not a vulnerability. Our solution works the same, only with much deeper coverage of the landscape of possible vulnerabilities and the fact that we are capable of embedding that throughout your code, including third party binary code and maintain low resources and light footprint on your devices. Uh, In, let I me, think there were let me, of, let me add, yeah. let, let me, uh, Anata, let me add a little bit more uh, to this, uh, to, to your answer. Um, when you look at the spectrum, um, because the, the, the audience ask um, what database exists and that database, it's a CV, it exists uh, everywhere. If you just uh, look at for the CV database, you're going to find it. You're going to find a lot of items there hundreds, thousands of items. The intent is how do you deal with what's happening in the future? You can deal with existing ones, but the intent is what do you do for the future? So that's why we're, when we partner with Sternum for protecting our firmware, for protecting our modules, we look to actually understand what's in the field. Uh, we, have to, we have to be very uh, careful uh, our devices, our modules, their uh, uh, shell life, let's put it this one, it's very long. They can sit out there in some unremote locations where things can go very bad and they have to function constantly. So there is no quick way of patching them. There is a way, but there is a, a very costly way of patching this. So always we are looking to understand ahead of time how to actually reduce the risk and mitigate them uh, with technologies that we can put them right at the beginning without actually knowing what the new exploitations are. Go ahead, Joe. Well, thank you, Natalie Mihai. I think we have time for one last one. I think uh, it's uh, somewhat of a, a, seg a seg segue question that uh, Natalie has already uh, answered, but this is a uh, uh, interesting in how it happens. Um, to, it has been posed to us by uh, a couple of people in the audience. Uh, can you specify some uh, uh, real-time attack remediation examples? Yeah, sure. So uh, I can give some uh, even real use cases uh, from our already deployed uh, devices. Uh, one of them was heap overflow vulnerability. Uh, it was a zero day vulnerability and our solution uh, actually uh, identified the uh, attempted corruption of the memory, raised up an alert uh, on ADS that pinpointed the exact function that contained the vulnerability with the IP addresses that were involved in the attack, enabled response, and also prevented the attack and rebooted the device to uh, a safe state. Um, 
um, and to, to prevent any damage. Uh, another example would be a brute force attack that we have detected. Uh, basically, we detected multiple logins attempts in, uh, in a short period of time. And uh, another example would be a rollback attack that we detected on over the update mechanism. Um, and another uh, um, execution flow integrity violation, an attempt to run uh, basically a malicious code. Uh, all of those are, are specific examples of how we remediated and prevented uh, attacks in, in real time. Thank you, Natalie. No, <clears throat> very insightful. I believe that's all the time we have for today. Um, I'd like to thank all of our speakers today and uh, and remind the audience to be sure to check your inboxes in the coming days for the uh, slides and the replay link. And uh, and many thanks again to all of those who joined us today. <laughs>